Colonel Bill McConnell, U.S. Air Force, retired. Please welcome him. Thank you. Welcome again. I love you. I've been told I'm going to be shot in the back if I'm not done in five minutes, so I'm going, to, I'm going to make this real quick. I'm going to point out that it was my pleasure to fly that airplane for 13 years. Three years more, I flew the F-16, and I was always looking for the enemies of America with the authority to remove them. Now as a retiree, an Annapolis graduate, a Marine, an Oath Keeper, and a Christian, I'm going after some bigger fish, uh, and on a global level. I was called to Malaysia to help the nation of Malaysia find out who took their airplane in March. And in today, on Memorial Day, the 26th of May, Malaysia has front page news about what we collectively have exposed. On March 8th, we were told that there was trouble with Malaysian Airlines flight MH370. An urgent search and rescue mission is underway right now after a large passenger jet disappears on its way to Beijing. No one knows exactly what happened or where the plane is. And now there are new questions about the identity of two of the passengers. The breaking story straight ahead. In the Ukraine, tensions ratchet up. Russia now accused of carrying out more aggressive bullying tactics against the Ukrainian military. And Poland takes action to protect its consulate in Crimea. The irony of that report was the mention of the conflict in Ukraine, which was a deliberate coup organized by the U.S. government. What wasn't known by many at that time was that the missing plane and the deliberately carried out events in Ukraine were connected. But I'm going to ramp up the irony even further by connecting many more recent scandals and conspiracies with the missing plane. But before I do that, I want to come right out and explain that if my theory is correct, the passengers and crew from flight MH370 are all dead. However, they did not die in a plane crash. I'll explain later in this presentation. Much of the data used to arrive at the theory that resulted in this presentation were derived from a report by Andrew S. McGregor. Admittedly, I know very little about this man. However, the information he compiled stands up to scrutiny and therefore I'm using the information based solely on its merit. I told you I was going to connect the missing Malaysian flight with other conspiracies, so you won't be surprised that I'm rewinding the clock to the summer of 2012 and the Aurora Theater shooting. The focus of reports showing the first press conference were on suspect James Holmes and Chief of Police Dan Oates. Just this past Thursday was Dan's last day as Chief of Police in Aurora. He's moving on to become the Chief of Police of the Miami Beach Police Department. What people don't typically know about Dan is that he got his master's degree from New York University and his Juris Doctorate from New York Law School. He's licensed to practice law in Colorado, New York, and New Jersey. Not something you'd expect from the Chief of Police in any city. At the peak of his career in New York and before moving to Aurora, he was the head of intelligence for the New York Police Department. In footage of the Aurora press conference, you may recall seeing this man and his telling facial expressions. His name is James Yacone. In 2011, he was named special agent in charge of the FBI's Denver division by director Robert Mueller. Before that, he served as a section chief in the FBI's Critical Incident Response Group, which oversees the FBI's National Tactical Program, Crisis Negotiation Program, and a variety of mobility and crisis response assets. The CIRG is basically the military wing of the FBI, and it works to successfully resolve critical incidents worldwide. Our Joint Terrorism Task Forces are very active, not just from an international terrorism perspective, but also a domestic terrorism perspective. So we actually have three Joint Terrorism Task Force squads um, focused on international terrorism and then you know, one specific squad here focused on domestic terrorism and it works well. I mean all of the uh, local and state police officers and detectives have the same clearances that the agents do. They sit side by side and um, the way we work it is if that agency has a terrorism matter occur in their uh, area of responsibility, that local or state agency, that local or state officer will work jointly with an FBI agent um, as a case agent on that case. 
So they all carry a pretty big caseload, uh, and they work arm in arm with access to the same databases and the same systems. We've had some national terrorists. Um, Naji Bulazazi was a very well publicized uh, counterterrorism investigation. Zazi was definitely somebody that was trained internationally, uh, and but bought into the philosophy, really gaining access through the internet um, to radicals that were overseas. And then he decided to act on that and travel abroad, get some of his training, and then come back here. He was planning and facilitating uh, out of this area of responsibility, but his target was New York City. We've had other uh, recent um, concerns on the counterterrorism side as well. So our Joint Terrorism Task Forces are very active, not just from an international terrorism perspective, but also a domestic terrorism perspective. Going back to the missing Malaysian flight of March 8th, on March 10th, it was reported by numerous sources that the Malaysian government was being assisted by the FBI. In other reports, Boeing announced they had joined an official U.S. team investigating the disappearance and was advising the National Transportation Safety Board already in Southeast Asia. To cut to the chase, the investigation was now a U.S.-led investigation orchestrated by the FBI's CIRG. This despite the fact that the FBI doesn't have any jurisdiction outside of the U.S. or U.S. Embassy.